both of his career losses. He's got an 11-2 mark. Both those losses occurred in the U.S. And we've got a knockdown scored within the first 10 seconds. Six, seven, eight. You okay? Walk to me. Box. I'm so confused right now, Tess. I'm, I'm just confused. Burns boxed last week, moved around, used his movement, and then he comes out and gets aggressive with the power puncher. Makes no sense to me. Cervera has three first round knockouts. Those came early on in his career. The first four fights of his career. Ten knockouts among his 11 wins. Oh, Severa has really good experience against really good competition. You know, he's a, a Colombian brawler. He comes to fight. He said he's been working on his boxing. You know, he says he wants to set things up now and just not be a straightforward fighter. But he has heavy hands. You can hear the thudding sound of those punches he's landing on Burns, either on the gloves or on the body of Burns. You mentioned the experience. The losses are to Ruben Villa and Miguel Mariaga. Watch your head. Watch your head. Miguel Mariaga, who we will see Thursday night against Mark John Yap, will be in the main event as we are back in the bubble Thursday night. So Bear is showing a lot of poise right now. I appreciate the fact that he didn't allow Burns to dictate how this fight was going to be fought. Burns came out looking for a street fight, and so Bear is looking for more like a boxing match, and it's working in his favor right now. Yeah, Burns came Burns came out like it was a street fight, Dre. Then he got caught. <laughs> got caught with a hook from Severa. Well, that cooled him off a little bit. Now Severa's able to box like he wants to. Burns isn't showing that same eagerness. At least not right now. not. Yeah, just what you were saying, Burns came out aggressively, left himself wide open, throwing the hook, and he got countered right in between that, left his own left hook. Here it is, nice setup, boom, shorter, tighter left hook from Severa. That's what we call punching in between punches. So Vera's doing a beautiful job right now, just staying calm under fire. Stop, stop, stop. And just not allowing Burns to rush him or to make him pick up the pace. So Vera's letting Burns know that this is the pace we're going to fight this fight at. And this is how this fight is going to go. He's dictating how this fight's gonna go, and, and that's why he's landing clean, flush shots like that. And right now, Burns has no answers. Oh, there's a good, solid right hand from Cervera. To me right now, Burns is doing the right thing by moving. You know, you got to move against a power guy. You know, power guys, guys that shoot punches with power, they have to be grounded. They like to keep their feet planted on the ground. So if you move on them, you make them have to keep resetting their feet to be able to land their power. Bernardo, what are they saying in the corner of Cervera? Max Garcia is very happy with the poise of Cervera in that first round. And he says, look, you catch him coming in with that stick jab or counter with the right, you can continue to have success. Stop! Cervera is landing heavy shots. Tim, you mentioned that earlier, but 
He doesn't seem to be loading up to me. He has great punch selection. He's calm under fire, like I said before. He's sort of allowing Burns to, you know, just get himself in trouble. Like, Severa's not setting any big traps. It's Burns' is over eagerness that's getting him hit with all these plus shots right now. That's a heavy shot right there from Severa, but he didn't throw it hard. Stop! I, nice shot right there from Burns, right down to the body, and Severa got his attention. What Burns gonna need to do here, he's gonna need to get in, and he's gonna need to get out. He can't stand there waiting on the receipt from Severa. Remember, Michaela Mayer, she's very good looking prospect who we saw a couple weeks ago is on that card and the heavyweight guido vianello is on that card all topped by oscar valdez and we are hoping that perhaps in this calendar year we anticipate it there will be a showdown with miguel burchelt if he gets past jason bless You can see a little bit more urgency in Severa right now, stepping up the tempo on Burns, moving forward now, coming behind his jab a little bit more aggressively this round. See, that type of stuff right there is what Burns needs to continue to do. Throw combinations from the outside and continue to pick up his feet and move location. But it's like you said, Tim, the mistake that Burns is making is he'll throw a punch and he moves back casually as if no punches are coming back. And for the majority of this fight, Severa has thrown punches back at Burns after he's thrown. See, that was an attempted counter right there. There's some success for Burns is coming straight ahead. There is, Tess, and I was just going to say that, but for both guys right now, if one guy would faint, you know, and see what the other guy's going to do and then make him counter, you know, kind of change the cadence a little bit of what's going on. You know, these guys are not fainting, they're just throwing. Cervera was able to play some body shot with that left hand moments ago. See, Clay Burns That's is landing right. some good shots. He just has to expect Cervera to throw every time. Even if he doesn't, just get out of the line of fire, score some points, move, come back, attack again, rinse and repeat. If he does that, he can start to score some points and win some rounds. Stop! Gotta get busy. Shoot shot, Stop. Well, this is sort of this has been the story of the fight where Clay Burns has good offense. He comes in with his head down. Severa steps back. Boom. But Clay Burns gets hit on the way out the door because he doesn't expect a punch to come back. He lands a good jab. And he just gets hit on the way out, so he has a good moment, but Severa is able to steal the play. To this point, Cervera has a 40 to 36 connect advantage over Burns. And oftentimes with judges, Joe, it's the last punch that they see that they oftentimes score in the midst of an exchange. And right now, that's Cervera. I think what young fighters and just fighters in general need to understand is, is that wherever your head was last, your opponent's gonna throw. <laughs> He's gonna throw where he saw your head last. So if you throw a shot and you get your head off the line, guess what? You're, you're gonna make your opponent miss. You have to think about that every time you let your hands go. You know, Burns did something about 15 seconds ago 
Watch your head. He came Watch out and he jumped face. Severa. You know, and, and I saw Severa a little bit uncomfortable bagging up. You know, I think Burns has the key. He has to figure out how he can get inside and stay inside on Severa. You see Severa holding right there. Work, work, work. Well, Burns is unorthodox. He's an awkward fighter, so we just saw a few seconds ago, we saw him sort of run in and break all the rules, but, but land the shots. That's what he's got to keep doing. Just expect Severe to throw back after he punches. Yeah, unfortunately for him, that's his best chance, but it comes with risk. Yeah, and listen, Clay Burns is 9-8, and eight, so we get it. I'm not saying he's an undefeated fighter or anything, but he's got enough athleticism and good enough legs where he can get out of the way and avoid the, the return punch from Severa. But you notice every time Severa bags up, he's up in the air. He's not ready and set the punch. That's the time that Burns needs to continue to come forward and cut off that ring on him and attack him. See, he's up in the air right there. That's when you attack him, not when he comes down and come forward. I think Severa needs to stay in the body of Burns. Every time he's going downstairs, he's got a reaction from Clay Burns. Fort Worth gets in work at Pauly Alley level as Jim there. Served the Marines, had a four year stint. And now here he is in tough against Ruben Severa. 11 and 2 marks it's from Colombia. Talk to us about not having the best training in Colombia. Wasn't good sparring there. Was making a lot of mistakes. He said all the coaches down there, they just want me to come forward. And he never really got a chance to work on his defense or evolve as a complete fighter. Stop! Anytime Burns stays out there at mid-range, standing in front, looking like he's taking a picture, he gets hit with big shots from Severa. But anytime he's inside the pocket, he's safe, he's inside the power, and he's in control. Yeah, I think Clay Burns needs to be all the way outside where he can't get hit if he's thinking or all the way inside where he can smother the punches of Severa. The in-between game is a dangerous place to be. Yeah, but when you're at the in-between game, what you have to learn and do is you got to be ready for offense to come at you, and then also you, that's the time to drop your feints. You're close enough for him to believe that you're going to be th throwing a shot. Didn't make him miss and didn't make him pay. Start. Burns was able to score there. Stay busy, baby. Stay busy. This is what his corner wants him to do just when he's in the inside. He said, just throw. Just hit anything. Let your hands go on the inside. Exactly what he needs to do, and he's having success right now. Stop, stop, stop. Pick him up, pick him up. Watch your head, Buffy guy. You don't have to run from the power. You can actually step inside the power. And when Clint, when Burns Duke does that, he has success. What is he waiting on? Stop. Burns need to get those hands going right now. One hand free, you need to work with it. Stop. Second time we've seen Clay Burns here fight in the bubble. We also Thursday night on ESPN. Stay busy, stay busy. That's the future right there, Tess. I believe that's the future of heavyweight boxing. Jared Anderson. Can't wait to see him. Let me tell you something. Our present isn't that bad. We still got... Fury Wilder three. We still got Anthony Joshua with title defenses, and then if everything stays the course, a 2021 that should produce an undisputed heavyweight champion. No, 
I've been watching Ruben Severa, and he's got a, a steady approach. He's steady. He's, you know, he doesn't go too high or too low, but I'm also watching Clay Burns go to another gear over the last two rounds, and I've yet to see Cervania, Cerve, excuse me, Severa meet him and go to that gear along with him. Stop! For that, keep your head up, keep your head up. Clay Burns had his most productive round in that fifth round. He landed 16 of 51 total punches, including 15 of 35 power punches. If I'm in the corner of Clay Burns right now, I'm telling him to throw left hooks. Throw left hooks. Lead with left hooks. You want to know why? Severa keeps moving to his right. Look at that right hand. It's down. He's going to run right into it. I just like the effort from Clay Burns. I like the fact that he does have multiple gears. You see him switching up his game plan. One minute he's attacking, the next minute he's boxing. That's what it takes to win any professional prize fight, especially as you start to go up to the higher level. But right now, Silvera has not shown that he can do anything other than what he's shown. And that's why he's lost. And I'm talking Ruben Severa, the bigger fights when he fought the bigger names because he wasn't able to make the adjustments and step his game up when he needed to. There's a one-two from Cervera. Burns was slightly off balance. Burns is coming in the same way. He's just following. He's not cutting off the ring. You got to learn how to cut the ring off. Got to be a step ahead of your opponent. Two shots, two shots, go, let's go. 